Killing the Business, Episode 3. Top Gun, Forever Young. Let's get right into it. So since Episode 2, you picked up another injury. We... We uh, we were know. the talk this of the is, internet again. This is the first injury I've just hurt myself a bunch of other times. Yeah, you want me to just talk through what I was feeling in the moment? Yeah, let's let's play the clip and let's talk about this broken ankle. That's the diagnosis, right? Yeah. Oh God. Um. So everyone thinks I broke my ankle on the military che chest press to the chairs. That is. That is not the case. I I twisted my shit doing the fucking 619 fake out because I wanted to be fucking Rey Mysterio from Halloween Havoc 1997. A move I've done probably like a hundred times in practice and I did it five times before the show. And I just, I put my ankle down to stop my momentum to get to the next thing. And my ankle stopped. It, my body just decided to turn all the way around. Hmm. So after you did that from the inside the ring, you kept walking, right? Mm-hmm. I, I so had, it was broken, but you kept walking. Yeah, I had to do another fake out dive. So my question is, did it hurt when you were walking? Oh yes, yes. Like I remember, <clears throat> I when I twisted, I went, "Ooh, shit." Okay, like, and I stumbled, and I'm like, "Okay." Uh, something's wrong. And then I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll do the next spot. I go to do it, and I can't get over the top rope at all. Like, I, I went down, and my legs did not come back up. So I do that, and then I end up super kicking him with the same leg, which hurt like a bitch. And I was supposed to jump onto his shoulders and do a poison rana. Uh, yeah, I just kind of sat myself on him and tried to go. And when he caught me, he was holding my ankles, which I specifically told him to do. But it sucked in the moment because I'm like, holy shit, what are the fucking odds that he has to hold my ankles? And I might have just sprained my shit. So it's broke. Where's broke at? It's broke. I don't know what the fuck it's called, but it's like the outside part of like my ankle. I fractured a bone in there and then I sprained. Well, this is what the doctor said. I've never even seen the x-ray. They wouldn't let me see it for some reason. But he said I sprained so many ligaments in my ankle that I moved some of my bones around. Hmm. Which was definitely not something I wanted to hear. So then you went to the back. You got set in the chair. Oh, my and... God. This is where I get fucking pissed because, like, everyone is showing concern and whatever and whatever. And then I hear one dumbass in the background go, ah, he's fine. And, you know, I don't know. To me, why would you fucking say that? That's fucking stupid. Like, even if I was fine, who am I trying to work in that situation? Marcus carried me all the way to the back and Iron sat. Iron Eagle. Kayfabe. Iron Eagle sat, like, picked me up, went all the way to the back, and sat me on a chair. What am I trying to do? Work the boys? I don't. I don't know. I like to work the crowd. I don't like to work the wrestlers. What's the point in that? Like, wait, seriously, that's dumb as shit. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know, brother. But the fact that that dude thought I was faking it, and then he didn't even like check on me at all. Like, ever, like you know. I, most people, like, checked on me and whatever. Like, that's fine. But, like, the fact that you said that and didn't fucking check on me at all, I think, was fucking, like, crazy. Because he looked at me, too, a couple of times as he was passing me and just didn't say shit to me. Which I guess is cool. Like, you know, I don't require you to be nice to me. Well, people aren't nice to either one of us. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. It's a fucking long-ass list. It's a long list, brother. But, but like, <laughs> some of the people that aren't nice to me at least were like, hey, man, I hope you get better. So, yeah. So maybe that dude ju just fucking hates me forever. <laughs> Who knows? But... Anyway, before we get into the shit talking of killing the business, let's go to a lighter note because that was a sad note. Then we go to a, a nice note. Then we go to the to the thing that everyone came here for, right? Mm -hmm. So we 
A lot of people think killing a business is all about shit talking and it getting shit off our chest. No. It's not. It's about shooting the shit. So, despite wanted, what you just heard, I wanted to create a new segment where we put someone over. It's called Gotta Push You <laughs> Over, Brother. Ooh, I like that. Gotta Push You Over, Brother. So, each episode, I was going to say each week, but we were really bad at putting these out weekly. Yeah, so, I'm on one leg, and it took me five minutes to walk <laughs> up the stairs today, so... So, I want to give Top Gun and myself a time, some time, to talk about somebody who we want to put over. Only one person, no honorable mentions, no number two, no number three, each episode. I'll go first. Yeah. I'll go first, because this was really hard. It was really hard for me to pick just one, because a lot of people... I think deserve to be put over, but I gotta go with the person I think helped me out the most. And there's a lot of people that helped me out, right? But I wanted to give a shout out to Alex Weir. I think I think Damn, he's so one of the head. best. I think he's one of the best in the whole state. And for whatever reason, he was helping me out when I first graduated. When I was sending him practice matches, he would watch it and send me. He would like pick apart that match and send me like such he usually sent voice messages but they would be like minutes long and he would send multiple so i'm like god this guy actually cares because he wouldn't he wouldn't take his time to watch and critique just a practice match a regular practice match and give me like all these all this advice on how to get better what to do outside the ring in the ring and he critiqued my promos he's just he to me i wanted to give him a shout out alex weird there's other people, but Alex Weir, number one. Great. Now I'm, now I'm going to put over another DTA member, and they're going to think we're Marks. <laughs> this is, great. 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 This is, we now, are Marks. Well, I guess, <laughs> yeah, we're, but still. <laughs> damn, now, okay. Yeah, I can, I can hear some people. I don't know who drops. it is. I don't know who it you is. You see Top Gun and Forever Young's podcast? Fucking Marks. <laughs> I, I can already, I can already imagine it. You know who's gonna be up right, in arms. All right, who is it? Who is but it? If there's one guy I had to put over above everybody else, it would probably probably be Adam Wick. Just because when I was starting, you know, a lot of people had their opinions about me, like as a person and a wrestler. But he was like one of like one of the first guys that I looked up to that was like going out of his way to like make sure I was cool and, like, telling me new spots that I could do. Like, I used to be just um, the guy that took heat for other people, and I'd do, like, one move, and then, like, I'd go to the back and I'd get shit on for my performance. And, like, I'd gotten used to that. Like, you know, there was people shitting on me from the very start in every locker room that I was in consistently. And, like, when I first wrestled Adam Wick, he said I didn't do enough shit. Like, he told me to do way more shit because, like, I had never really gotten, like, a lot of moves in before. And, like, he was a guy that, like, really told me, hey, you can just start wrestling how you want because I wasn't wrestling how I wanted to. And he really helped push me, like, mentally and creatively to get in the space that I was before I got injured. So, yeah, that's the guy who I wanted to put over. Shouts out Adam Wick. Shouts out Adam Wick. Shouts out Alex Weir, both of them, because Alex Weir, one of the best in the state, too. He don't. They don't have to help us. They yeah. really don't. Yeah. But for some reason, some odd reason, that proved that you can be one of the best and you can. You don't have to be a shitty person. Both of those, those guys <laughs> know how to work, too. <laughs> Great workers. Adam Wick knows how to work. And he's not a dickhead. That too. <laughs>
know what? That's we, a push. You know what we should do? We should get Jason Hotch and Jack Price when they're both on impact to come in and lose to Gio Bronco. <laughs> I mean, who they have a train? <laughs> yeah. Jason Hodge, Jack yeah. Price, you know, Gio two. Bronco's the best trainer. When I think trainer of those three, I think Gio Bronco. Yeah, yeah. Truth Martini's <laughs> also in Michigan too, but you want to go to Gio Bronco to get your training. Uh, brother, brother. Oh, uh, boy, saying. we might have to cut some of that out. Fuck. Cut what? <laughs> cut what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, what is he gonna teach us how to do? That's I like. I saw him. Never mind. You know what? Enough of that. He Enough did that. break Jr.'s nose, and from what I was told, he did not apologize. So you know the spider, the spider. Fuck. Yeah, that's the the spider. Two E's. The spider. spider. I'm sorry. And yeah. Two E's all the time. But <laughs> fucking, I, I don't know, man. Like the fact that like. You're a trainer, and then you injured somebody, and that it, you allegedly did not apologize, and you allegedly like said it was the other guy's fault uh, when it wasn't. Was crazy to me. The fact that like you're supposed to be a guy that is molding young wrestlers and trying to give them a good path to start, oh. and this is what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, well, is man, crazy to me. Me and him don't get along uh, because. Oh, we're going to that. At, at, at shows, we don't even shake hands because uh, I got told by multiple people that when my match got announced with Jason Hodge that he created a, well, it was already a, a Facebook group. I don't want to make it sound like he created it specifically for me. But it was a Facebook group that he had with some people who don't get booked. Well, that he was trying to help get more bookings. Let me say that. But, I mean... He doesn't get that many bookings himself. So. Well, uh, apparently he gets flown out to Colorado and his travel paid for and his dick sucked and whatever. So I, that's going well for him. So I guess. At least he has that because he doesn't really got much in Michigan, though. This is also the guy who kept saying he would never go back to All-Stars and talk about how trashy it is. And then he just and keeps then he going. keeps going back to keeps All-Stars. Back. I do like his student, though. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Preston. Yeah, he's, he's a nice guy. All of the students, well, the ones I know are nice. Um, but, yeah. you know what I realized? All the good guys are nice. That's what I'm saying. All the good people are nice. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like, if, if people, if a bunch of people say I'm a dickhead, right? I would probably think at some point, alright, maybe it's my fault. Like, if it's not... Because it's not just us that think this way. Trust me. Oh, brother. There's entire locker rooms of people that feel this way. We're just the ones that put it on camera and put it on social media. So if you want to shoot the messenger, go right ahead. Because I'm not going to see y'all for another, like, six... To I never gave a timetable on that. What you see is what you get with Forever Young. I'm just saying... Yeah, and y'all ain't gonna see me six for some weeks? time. No, no, it, it's see. six to eight weeks before I even start walking again. I broke my leg once, but that, I was I was young. I was really really young. Did you finish the match, brother? I wasn't wrestling, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wrestling. I'll tell you that much. I broke my wrist too, but ooh, I, I was have... also young. <laughs> yeah. I've... Me too, dog. Speaking of the spider, though, because you brought him up, what in the world did I see on social media? Y'all two were going at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, man. He, he's just like, I love that, like, he's he talks like an NPC character. <laughs> like, he, I just imagine, like, before shows, he's just standing in an idle pose, and, like, you gotta walk up to him and press A to talk to him. <laughs> like, that's, that's how he talks. Like, you walk up to him, greetings and salutations from The Spider, and, like... Shouts out to him, though. Yeah, shouts I, out. I think that The Spider is the greatest pro wrestling all-stars champion of all time, because he, he takes that title... Every, he's better champion than us. Yeah, that's true. He takes that title every single, like everywhere. Everywhere. You see a picture with him. He online. took it to the hospital. He with had him. it in the hospital. He bed. had a blood clot. <laughs> <laughs> that title. That he is the greatest champion the, probably I've ever seen. The fact that like he is dealing with a blood clot and he stopped and thought, 
Let me take this. Make with sure I me. get the title. Make sure I gotta <laughs> promote the company. Like that is actually dedication, bro. I if even if I did have a title and I went to the ER, I sure as shit wasn't bringing that <laughs> thing in me. I can barely hold a fucking plate of food and go five feet, let alone carry a whole title. When he was champion, well, when I was champion, I kept it on the floor. I, I was gonna put it on my couch, but my couch was like white and leather, and you know the title was you know heavy and. Yeah, I didn't want to put it on there. He kept his title inside the car. Yeah, the yeah, time. I kept mine in the. Yeah, it, was it was in the car. It was in the car the whole time, whole like, time. He's like, "So, can I keep this in your car?" I'm like, "No. What if my car gets stolen? What if my car got stolen? <laughs> you know, at least it wasn't in my brother. <laughs> if I did need to impress people at work, though, that was like the easiest go to. Uh, I think we had something else to talk about. Uh, what, did we talk about the FU incident? The, Radomir? Oh, God. Wait, we had two incidents, actually. Oh, uh, no. Okay, so let's give the Radomir thing from our point of view. So, yeah, we had no idea who the fuck the guy was. We just fucking, like, we saw him getting changed. We went over our time, brother. Well, people want this to be longer, so. All right, keep talking, I guess. Uh, that's that's what I heard, brother. We we go over our time all the time. I guess. So speak for yourself, brother. Man, whatever. So we're fucking just in the back trying to call our match. Emphasis on trying, and like fucking oh oh god, they're gonna think that's a shot on them. That's not a shot on you guys, by the way. But anyways, fucking. No, just uh, I don't talk like right. So right when we we're about to go out. Oh, after that an admission after an admission. Yeah. Okay. So Adam Wick comes to the back. And I then, walk down the gorilla position. Yeah. Adam Wick says, "No, you're not next." I'm like, "Huh?" I see the whiteboard. We're ne we've been thinking this all this time. He's like, "No, some bullshit's about to happen." But I didn't think anything of it because that's how Adam talks. Like he says yeah. shit like that all the time. So I'm like, "All right, who's next?" He said, "The guy in the red." I didn't, he pointed to the guy. I didn't think anything of it because they're fu. Shouts out to fu because they have all these people that I. That was my first time seeing Sledge Gibson, uh, the Vape God, like a lot. Shouts of out Vape God, very based. Shouts out Sledge Gibson, very based. Also but, very based. But, uh, based God Sledge. Gibson. So I didn't think anything of it. Like so, I didn't know him. He went out and we're in the back and we could hear. Ross on the mic, like, roasting this guy. And in my head, I'm thinking, like, this is a part of the show. I'm like, why is he roasting him so much? Oh, yeah, there's another part of this because when Adam told you that, I saw that. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? It doesn't, where's the whiteboard? I swear to God, it says us next. It did, they didn't write anything. So I take the whiteboard, I pick it up, I look at it, I walk over to Adam, I said, yo, they didn't write it on the whiteboard, are you sure? He just looks at me. Shakes his head and says, don't worry about it. Huh. I didn't know that until right now. But Dog. we hear this roasting session going on, and then Congo calms, music hits. But I'm like, Congo just had a match. Like, yeah. just had a match. So I, didn't, like, I was a little confused. Then when the guy came to the back, he was like, I have the loudest reaction of anyone. What are you talking about? And I'm like, oh my God, that was a shoot. <laughs> so I said it out loud, was that a shoot? And they're like, yes. The guy goes to his bag, and I hear wrestlers say, nope, don't change. Get your shit and get out. I'm like, holy cow! <laughs> well, that was an experience. And then we had to go out and wrestle right after that. Like, that shit shook me the fuck up so bad, because I just had no clue what the fuck was going on. And then our music hits, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay, here we go. And we had to go out and... I almost died in that match, too. Yep, so apparently uh, some random guy just came to the locker room and said he wanted to be on the card and put his shit on, and yeah. And then we had the thing at yeah. Metro Pro where a fan got drunk and was messing with people all night. Yeah, and then he threw a water bottle at Kyler Coleman's I, head. I saw that. Where did you see that? Um, I didn't see it, but I heard it. I saw it. I was editing one of my matches. I saw it. I was like, oh, this guy was really good. Because my mom told me he was acting crazy all night. And then... Uh, after no during the Cole Brothers match, he pulled Jonte's pants down. Yeah, he then, just what? Like, first of all, shouts out to Jonte Key because he had 
full permission to knock that fan Wait, out. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because LJ got his towel stolen by that dude, too. What? Yeah, and here's why. I'm just hearing this. Here's why, because Jonte, after that happens, I'm assuming this is after, Jonte and this dude are going it. back and forth, like, are heavy. You? Yeah, and Jonte grabs LJ's towel, picks it up, and launches that bitch at him, and then flips the dude off, and the dude bum-rushes Jonte. Really? Yeah, and Jonte's backing the fuck up. He's not, like... He's, you know, he's trying to keep it fucking professional. How and have you people not get, told me this? <laughs> I thought you saw it. I thought you knew about no. this. Oh. I'm, I am leaning out of the curtain. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Is this supposed to happen? Because our spot was next. And fucking <clears throat> the guy had to get held back. And apparently, Jonte shoved him. And allegedly, this dude fell so hard into this old no, woman. No, I, uh, I think that was after. Uh, wait, was that before? I, I don't. Oh. I don't know. This might have been because I know. I know. Like, like right when intermission was about to start, one of the cold brothers got the mic. This is when I knew that something was going on. He said, "Don't touch wrestlers. Don't touch wrestlers." And then he got out the ring. There was like a big crowd. Like, and I thought that's when the pushing happened. But maybe it was before. I don't know. But that they did push at that moment too. But yeah. Which was, uh, yeah, and they uh, they double strapped up every single one of them. I don't know why you needed two guns on each side. Shouts out because I was standing next to Matt Taven at this time, next to doing merch, and I had a nice conversation with them. Do this, dude. This was insane. I had to go out and wrestle after that too. <laughs> Fuck, man. That kind of fucked me. What a controversial. <laughs> Day that that, one. that we also day had. Uh, do, do we want to talk about the DSW guy making an appearance? I don't even know <laughs> what to think about that because that's another case of me not knowing who he was, and then me Same. finding out who he was. Same. Like that, I like he was in the back, and like I was introduced to him. I was like, "This is a guy doing this," and I'm like, "All right." Well, cool. first time making an appearance in seven years, apparently. I didn't know either. I know, I learned about it after the show. After the show was over and we were tearing down the ring, uh, Steve was on the ring, like, taking a screw. He's like, hey, forever young. Like, Steve was whispering. He never fucking whispers. I'm like, huh? He's like, that's the guy. Remember the thing I told you about? <laughs> so he, he told me, he's like, this is his first time making an appearance in seven years. <laughs> Cause Steve wasn't Damn, at the show. Damn, that's a Michael Cole line. Steve wasn't at the show until after when we were tearing down, so that was insane. But I think that's all the time we got for this this episode of Killing the Business. I think we need to get off screen now. Yeah, we didn't talk about the award, but we'll get to that. Oh, the Rookie of the Year finally came out. Yeah, and to nobody's surprise, Brutus Atwell won. Congratulations to Brutus. I think it was well-deserved because... Yeah, I think Forever Young should have won personally. <laughs> Thank you. But I think it's deserved. <laughs> Shut up. What? Am I Why wrong? Did you have to say because you should have? <laughs> no. Um, all right, Kanye. Is Kanye the one that got on stage? I'm, I'm just saying, you've had bangers with Jason Hodge, DTA. Stop. Um, yeah, you might have to put that out. I think he deserves it because he, out of all the green guys, he went to the most shows. Yeah. He got the most matches. And yeah. On Facebook, people yeah. always talk about how much they love him. People don't say that about me, so... Uh, yes, Michigan, they do. Michigan's favorite wrestler. So, I think he deserved... Rookie yeah, of the he year. went to the most shows, all right. Yeah, and probably the most states. Yeah. I don't know. Probably the most states. Definitely yeah. the most matches. Yeah. Um, And probably had the most main events. On his own, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we got. <laughs> Killing the business. Uh, until next time. Top Gun Forever Young. We got uh, out of here. Oh, uh, see ya. Uh, base God. We're killing the business.